Hello. Well, today I just want to talk about something brand new that happened this week. Um, the Criterion Channel launched, yeah, which was the uh, replacement for Filmstruck, which the Criterion Channel and the Criterion Collection and Turner Classic Movies came together to, you know, make a classic cult foreign films be available to stream and had a lot of films from the Criterion Collection and um, yeah I've um, I've been going through some films um, the first film I watched was The Elephant Man because it's been a long time since I had seen that I don't even own the film on DVD can't get it on Blu-ray because it's not available in America for some reason even though it's quite popular and uh, is a classic in its own right, um, but yeah, they. Um, but yeah, uh, having that film on the Criterion Channel, though they do partner with other companies, um, from that do physical media to other film companies. So like you know, uh, Shout Factory is one, for instance. I got an email that um kind of give a rundown of all the companies that are helping out with the uh, Criterion channel. So, I read that, uh, and some of the names are like, that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, um, yeah, I've just been going through some films I've seen. Um, Following, which I have, and I've talked about on this channel, which was Christopher Nolan's first film. It's a short film. Uh, when I say short film, I don't mean it was a short movie. But I feel like it was an actual, like a film short. It was seventy minutes long, and um, yeah, if you know Christopher Nolan and his films, uh, he doesn't do short films anymore like that. That's uh, all of his movies are essentially over two hours. Um, Dark Knight Rises and Interstellar are born on, bordering on getting up to the three-hour mark. Um, and I remember, um, though, Dunkirk is, um, is not part of that. And, um, and the cool thing about this whole thing is you get special features. Like if you type in a name, like you can use it on the computer, you can get it on uh, like an app like uh, Amazon Fire Stick, which is what I've got it on, or... Um, Apple TV, or they give it a list of what you can, how you can watch these films when you have an account, and you do have to pay. It's either like ninety bucks a year, or I believe nine eighty nine a month. Um, so you know, hundred twenty dollars or ninety dollars, you can watch all these movies and stuff at a good price um, and with the Criterion Collection you know many of these films I, uh, I've i had an interest in I'd want to get some of them um, like for instance there's a film that Tokyo that uh, Tokyo Story I've heard from some people uh, particularly on YouTube here from um, uh, someone by the uh, I used by the name of uh, Daisuke Bipu, well, that's his actual name, um, but he, you know, he's, uh, he talks a lot about films that are in the Criterion Collection, he talks a lot about various films, um, uh, classic films a lot, and he talks about Japanese uh, films uh, uh, here and there, and he mentioned this and how it's a great film. And hearing him talk about it, then me going to Criterion's website and looking at it, I'm like, this seems really interesting. I kind of want to check this out. And now, instead of me blindly going in, essentially, and buying the film, really just going off of what positive things I've heard from him as well as from other people, I can now watch it for myself and then think, do I want to buy the Blu-ray? And I think that's a great thing. I think that's really good. Um, I think that's what will help help with this uh, 
um, I think that will help Criterion, really. Um, Criterion is really known for the physical media. And I remember hearing something like how a film struck, what you could do is um, get some films. Like, you, like the films would be on there for a certain amount of time. Oh, excuse me. And it's not that they will never return. Uh, but after a while, it'll go away and more films will pop up. Sort of like a rotation and stuff. So I, w I think that might be here, or, or it might be the same thing here. Um, Tyrion Channel. Just wanna. See about. Some of that stuff. just to show or tell you about. Um, you can have a list of films. Um, like I have a you know Tokyo Story and The Elephant Man. There's Paris, Texas. Um, and then there's some that's like the uh, uh, collection of some stuff. Like um, Igmar Bergman and Lee Volman, uh, you know, when he cast Lee Volman in Persona, he intended like he uh, initiated a remarkable creative partnership that would last beyond the passionate years, years long affair that would blossom between them and various things. Uh, Texas Theater, which is a Art House America, which play, which has um, plays visit to Dallas, uh, and uh, they show various, they put various films in there, um, and then there's a certain collection of stuff like the Columbia Noir, which is a film noir, you know, genre, enhanced by the shabby, um, distributable trappings of the B movies. So it's no surprise that some of the finest noir studio era were. Produced at the notorious budget conscious Columbia Pinchers, which is something I've noticed a lot of uh, these films will be from Columbia. Um, and you know, I mentioned uh, following, which I, you know, I have, but you can, um, which is something like um, some of these, like they don't have like the run time or something like that. Like they'll have a run time, but. Or something like Mildred Pierce, for instance. Click on that, and you can have all these, all these other videos. You'll have the film, then you'll have the intro, edition intro, and all these like little things like talking about like uh, Joan Crawford or restoring the film, um, and a bunch of other stuff like interviews, documentaries that will be con put into the Criterion Edition of the films, like on the Blu-rays, DVDs, you can also have that here, but sometimes if you type in like a film, like, like for instance, following, uh, I got the film, but then there's other videos that aren't combined into this thing, it has the film, and then it has the commentary, and it has like a conversation with Christopher Nolan where he talks about the film, and then it has three other videos, which I want to say were actually, um, put together in one thing, but they're like scenes from script to screen, like how the scenes change from the script to the actual movie. And um, instead of it being one long thing, they uh, separated them into uh, three parts. Though, though I guess, you know, I'm thinking of it like when you go through the menu, look at the features and stuff, or as Criterion does it, it's not special features, but they're um, supplements. And you go there, and there, like you might click on something, but then it gives you to another menu, which you can then choose from. Um, sometimes it's, you can play all of those things, like us little featurettes, essentially being one thing, or you can 
collect one, select one at a time. Um, and I guess that's what they did here, but instead of condensing, because they're not that long, um, really. Um, but uh, I, I prefer the, my favorite uh, special thing with that following set was the, aside from the film itself, was the 26-minute uh, interview. Um, but yeah, I'm just really going through some of these these uh, films that there are that they have, and I'm really enjoying it. There's a uh, Bugsy Malone, My Brother's Wedding, uh, there's newly added stuff, and there's women filmmakers. Martin Scorsese's World Cinema Project, which is a variety of um, films in each of these little, like, like volumes, like certain things. Like there's like a each film has different stuff. There's like movie plus four extras. There's a Memelia and the in the Claws of Light. I, I, I know I just butchered that title, but um, yeah, you get the movie and you get uh, four uh, things also to watch. Memories of Underdevelopment, which is the movies in six extras, and uh, Revenge, which uh, seems to be just the movie. Um, you don't say if you get extras or not. Yeah, some cool stuff here. Um, yeah, it's just uh, it's really cool. Um, I've seen some complain about the um, structure of it. Uh, I, I I personally don't mind the structure. Um, it's not alphabetized too, so maybe some might uh, like it if it was more in alphabetical order or year order, like he like like certain years, like go through the years and see like if you have a particular era or fondness of um, of a filmmaker or just in general maybe a genre or something you can't just go and like I'm gonna go here here and go to that year from this filmmaker or I mean, maybe an actor or a genre and just see what there is I don't know exactly how I personally would want that to be um, done if uh, that was to happen. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm not saying that would be a problem, but as of now, I have no problem with how it's laid out. I enjoy. I'm enjoying what they have to offer, and I'm glad to be able to support Criterion and all these uh, great films and all the companies that have come to partner with them. Because, you know, Blu-ray and DVDs may be niche. And some of these film and these films that would be implemented in these films in this streaming service may be seen as niche too. But I don't think that um uh, it would um I don't know. I I think if anything it'll help keep physical media alive, keep with keep criterion going and getting more popular, especially now they're, they've entered the streaming world for a second time. I think that'll help them even grow. And as they might, I don't know if they will do this or not, they might remove certain things for a while and then bring them back. So what like Netflix does, but I think if, if the uh, Criterion channel does that, it might be like, sort of like a theater or something, like, you know, double feature of some films or 
certain films by some specific filmmakers, what have you. They might just do that for a while, then bring them back at another time. You know, they have these films that's licensed to them, and they're going to show them as much as they can. Uh, they, they, they might uh, keep the films that are in the Criterion Collection that are on the streaming service. I'd be, they might may stay there for, you know, indefinitely. They may never remove those. Or some of the other films um, could get removed at some point for a while and then brought back. I don't know. Um, I know Netflix does, you know, they remove stuff. But some of the stuff they remove, they never get back. Like, they don't get the licensing for such a film anymore, or a TV show. Uh, maybe they didn't have a lot of traffic uh, there. I know King of the Hill was a big show. People love to watch on Netflix, but then there was a lot of disappointment when it was gone. And... Uh, yeah, they haven't at all tried to get that show back. Um, at least not from what I can tell. Um, if they have, they haven't tried to, you know, made a big fuss of it. Have people trying to write to whoever and trying to get to partner and license with Netflix so people can see that uh, stuff, those shows or movies on there again. Plus, also, Netflix is trying to produce in their own stuff, so that could be one thing, too. Remove stuff just so they make room for their films and series. Whereas Criterion, they're going to continue with their, you know, their films that they have in their library. And they'll try and branch out to get other classic films and cult films and foreign films and stuff that would fit within... Criterion Collection, even if they, though some of those films never make it into the Criterion Collection, at least, you know, then, it's like, you have, like, the Criterion Collection there. There you go. I would like it if The Elephant Man was in the Criterion Collection. Um, David Lynch has quite a bit of films in the Criterion Collection, like uh, Mahal and Drive, <clears throat> uh, and Racerhead, which I have, and, um, Blue Velvet will come out in May next month uh, in the Criterion Collection, so there's that. I'm sure once it's in there, uh, I, I believe they'll probably put that in the Criterion Channel, I would believe. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is just my uh, first, my thoughts, just my thoughts. Not really a review or anything. Um, I've just had it since the beginning of this week, so... I'm doing my best to try and get through so many movies that I can. Uh, as of now, I just watched a couple. But I hope to watch more. Um, and then hopefully I can, you know, if I enjoy those films, I buy them. And then maybe I'll then talk about them. So, uh, you know, I guess I could talk about them forever. But it's always fun to have, like, a something like a prop or something like, you know, uh, here's Once Upon a Time in America talking about my have it here in my hands uh, for instance so there's that aspect to it that I like having a blu-ray or DVD for um, but yeah um, that's really it um, apologize for the apologies for the length of this <laughs> I was trying to keep that short but you know I noticed that whenever I say that I'm gonna keep it short doesn't always intend to be as short as I intend. Um, though I'm sure if I did say that in the beginning, uh, it might be gone, going long, like just twice as long and stuff. But anyway, uh, that's my general thoughts on the Criterion channel, as it is now. I enjoy it. I like it for what it is. Hope to have to see more films come into the Criterion channel and into the collection also uh, like the elephant man would be a good addition i believe and um uh, addition i should say addition and other another uh, 
have films. Um, they have that they might not even have in the collection yet. So, um, yeah, I like it. I enjoy this uh, streaming service right now, and I can't wait to talk more about it and some of the films that are in it, in the Criterion channel. So, um, yeah, that's all I have for you now today. Um, hope you all will have a you know have a good day. Hope you're having a we'll have a good weekend. Have a good week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.